Oh, right, all right, all right, guys. We got Rainer in the top right side of the map. In the bottom left side, we've got Team Liquid's Clem, and it is the upper bracket finals of the Bellum Gen Star Zagora tournament. For those who don't know, this was held in Bulgaria. Just kidding, Bulgaria. Uh, in the town or city, I should say, of Stara Zagora, which sounds like it's from a fantasy. Uh, $10,000 tournament in a very, very cool venue. Um, the city I, I seemed to be super involved. There was like people doing traditional dances in like old school Belgium clothes, uh, Belgium, <laughs> Bulgarian, uh, you know, traditional dress and stuff. It was, it was awesome. I, I loved it, man. Um, there was some really good games. I haven't actually watched any of them. And I'm very curious to see what went down because obviously you got Rainer and Clem. Rainer is one of the few players who's really put up a good fight against Clem recently. He almost took him down when they played over in the EWC. And not only that, he's also gone even in maps with Clem in the World Team League recently. So Clem comes into this series uh, probably still as a favorite. And for me, the question mark is still how does Rainer beat him? Because Rainer has been doing a lot of tricks, right? He's been doing Ling Flood, Queen, Ling Drop, All-Ins, early Mutalisk plays, uh, lots of Baneling run buys. Um, he has been able to keep up, and he's been playing very good StarCraft. But Clem, on the other hand, has been doing very well just playing a bit simpler. Now, I don't know what the XD lame is. I don't know what they were talking about there. If you guys know, you can let me know. This is going to be great. I cycled down from Bucharest to watch the tournament, says dude. Oh, that's awesome, dude. It's a proper cycling trek. Good on ya. Reaper's coming in. Looks like a very standard link speed into third hatchery. So Rain is doing some pretty normal stuff so far. Nothing too crazy. SCV is blocking the third for now. So that is going to make it a bit harder for him to secure his third base. I think as he's probably going to go four queens. No extra overlords building just yet. Now he starts the overlord. Third queen starts inside the main base. He's going to bring these two queens down to secure the creep tumor placement. And he will be moving out. And creep tumor did get down pretty early. Clem's reaper a bit too damaged to force the issue. Third command center goes down in the main base for Clem. Clem's going to be going for reactor, Hellion, 3cc. The same thing he does pretty much every single game. He's also sent his SCV home that was blocking this expansion, realizing, hey, the jig's going to be up. The Reaper can deny a little bit longer, and that will be about that. you got to watch out here because Clem is famous for sniping that drone. It gets delayed to three minutes and five seconds. This doesn't feel great for Raynor, um, and it really is a testament to how annoying Clem is as a player. On the other hand, uh, is it the end of the world? Well, as long as you keep droning, you don't really get supply blocked at all. You can still saturate your two bases very quickly. You can see 320. He's already got 14 workers on the natural, 16 in the main, and the Zergling's running just before link speed. There is a Hellion here. Sorry, guys, should have noticed this one. I feel like I'm uh, so bad at monitoring the minimap lately. Four Zerglings, they don't really get any damage, just a bit of mining time. That was a good trade for Clem, of course, as he drops the second gas. Now, he's gone starboard, no second barracks. He was doing a lot of 2 1 1 after three command center, but he's going to open up with a Liberator this time, going a bit old school. I love the Liberator personally. I find Rain is one of the best at dealing with it, though, right? The, the Liberator, it can distract Rainer a little bit, but on its own, it has like a 0% chance of really getting any damage done. Bounces one queen out of the way, pokes in, and does pull back. There were four Zerg Zerglings already out ready, with six more about to pop. So if he committed there, it probably would not have worked out very well. Only 36 workers for Rainer. He does not have a second gas. He had to build 10 more lings here. Six queens, two more buildings, eight queens off just 38 drones. I don't know, guys. It, to me, it feels awkward only having this many drones. This does not feel like a good start for Rainer. Is he doing a queen zergling all in? Because he doesn't have a lair. He's making nine queens. He's going back to drones. It just, I, I, I feel like, you know, you, you really want this third base saturated fully. I guess as long as it's done by five minutes, that's not the worst benchmark of all time, but it's something where right now, Rainer being so close in workers to Clem is not a situation he's going to feel fantastic about. I mean, Clem's already landing his third base. Terran's got mules as well, remember, and that Liberator's going to sneak in down that left side. There are a few queens moving into position. Good queen split here for Rainer. Remember, he's the guy who popularized the queen split, and he's trying to hide them. He wants the Liberator to siege up. Oh, this is so clever. This is this is what happens at the highest levels, guys. Players start to adapt and, and, and they say, hey, I want you to siege your lib because if you see my queens with the Liberator, you're not going to siege up. But once you siege up, you're immobile. Super worth losing a queen and a, a drone for that Liberator because it allows them to just shut it down. Oh, and the Lings are going to trap. Oh, Clem. Uh-oh. Oh, Clem got so greedy going a full screen on creep to snipe the drone that was trying to mine open the minerals. And now Rainer. 
has he played a very safe opening? Yeah. Is it arguably too safe? Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> like his drone count sucks. But you shut down the Hellions and the Lib. Now you have complete map control. Your creep can spread unstopped until these medevacs arrive, which, yeah, the medevacs are halfway done. They'll join up with the Marines, start pushing forward in the near future. Still, you've got yourself a bit of room to get this creep out towards the Watchtower. Fourth base on the way on the right side. 1-1 one, one upgrades coming in. Clem throwing away those Hellions is a, a big weakness. He should have had those turning into hell. That's for the next push later on, roaming around, slowing down the creep and giving him some map presence. But as it is, it's Rainer now taking that worker advantage. He's about to go up to 70 workers against 56. Lings will do a nice little run by. Unfortunately, it's Clem. So Clem literally never loses SCVs on his third base to just Zergling run bys. He always pulls them way too quickly. Seventy drones are out. Four more building. One one's on the way. Bane the nest and lair producing as well. Marines going to be stimming down that left side. Okay, zerglings and queens coming in for the surround. Good hot pickup for Clem. Pulls back, gets to the safety, but the creep is immediately respread. Now this is something I've been saying a lot. You got people need to stop letting Clem unload his marines. That was good though for Rainer. That actually worked out. So you, you really can't just be letting... Like, why are we letting them unload? Why aren't those Zerglings chasing those medevacs? That's what I've been curious about, guys. Is I, I feel like Serral, Rainer, everyone... I think just a little bit more of forcing Clem to pull a bit further back with his drops as something players should do, just so he can't keep coming straight back in immediately after being pushed away. Fifth base on the way for Rainer on that right side. He's only on 76 drones. He's got kind of a dark style work account here. Lower economy will allow him to build more army. And good trades for Clem. Clem goes in the left side with another bio mine drop. Marines and Widow Mine's going to unload over there. The creep is incredibly deep though. And first Widow Mine shot pretty nice, but gets cleaned up. Marines get forced to pick up as well. Fourth Command Center and Armory is on the way. The Armory is a little delayed, but 2-2 hasn't started for Rainer either. So there's not a big tangible advantage or anything like that. Hive starts up real early along with Overlord speed, but Rainer needs to get that 2-2 going. That's the big thing he's missing. Clem starts 2-2. He's a little ahead on that. Even though Rainer's taken exceptional fights, he's never had an economic advantage in this entire game. Even now, being up 10 workers is not a lot. Finally, he gets up to 82 workers. Feels a little more comfortable for the Italian Stallion, but... No 2-2. Two, two. That's big. Clem's keeping him busy. You can tell Rain is really focused on getting a good amount of creep spread in this game. Like, his creep is very good on the growth. Even though he can't spread in the middle, he's spreading in the right side, spreading in the far left. Finally realizes his upgrades. He starts plus two melee, but he does not have the gas for carapace. And that's a huge issue. Plus two carapace is so, so important. All right, Marines moving in. They're going to pick up. Widowmine, watch out for the Widowmine. Ooh, and the Widowmine does not get a big hit. Rainer's on point. Oh, Clem, you dirty boy. Focuses down the Banelings, and that's a hatch cancel, that is. Just needs to click on it. Easy hatch cancel, and... Oh, it doesn't get canceled. It actually gets killed. Nice move for Clem. Clem's going to attack the right side as well. Oh, no, everything falling apart so suddenly for Rainer. Rainer was playing a very good game, but now Clem... Getting a double hatchery snipe is massive. Putting Rainer back to his initial four. Focusing down the Banelings there as well. Oh, Clem is disgusting. Absolute savagery. Yeah, good catch, guys. All right. Looks like now massive map control spread across the top left. Bottom right as well, and in the middle, Ultra Cavern's coming in. Finally, plus two Carapace started, but that delay could cost him. It's going to give Clem a window with a double upgrade advantage, something you don't want to deal with right now as Rainer. Clem, how the hell do you play well against these Widow Mines? Because he's always going to retarget with the Mines. That's his whole strength as a player, is those Mines will very rarely waste their shots. Now, we do have a big counterattack coming in. Mass Zerglings are going to try and come in from behind. They're going to try and break those rocks and everything. Banelings and Zerglings rolling through. Nice spreadies as well there. Sets off a lot of the Widow Mines. The Queens need to fall back, but the Lings, they've broken the rocks. If you can get in that third base, that's going to be big. Oh, no, he can't be affording to lose that. Plus two Carapace just got sniped. Deadly, deadly counterattack with the drop there. But Mass Ling counterattack comes in over here as well. Watch out for the Widow Mines, though. Widow Mines getting some big splashies. And Clem is going to defend very nicely. A few depots, 10 SCVs do go down, but the Marines trading exceptionally well. Marines picking up in the middle of the map as well. He's still got a drop in the top left. A couple of changelings there. Those are not Widow Mines. 80 workers to 70, but fourth base is up for Clem. He's got a planetary there as well. Drop goes back to the natural. Spore Crawler is going to help out a lot there. It does get a bit of damage, but nice micro for Clem to pull out of range. 
The Lings do push him away, but that lack of plus two carapace is a problem. New Evo's up, plus two carapace has started. Ultras are coming out with Kiteness plating on the way. But of course, Clem's already into 3-3. He's got four Marauders. He's got eight Barracks, no doubt, pumping. Extra tech labs have been added, as you can see in his main base. I like this continual Ling run by, though. That's really good. Anything to keep Clem off your back. It won't do a lot of direct damage, but it will distract him. Ling's over there behind the fourth base. Not going to do too much. They'll get a few Marines, but then they run out of surface area. Marines and Mines in the middle looking very good. In the north side, oh, it looks like the Lings are kind of breaking through. Adrenal Glands is a pretty good upgrade. Plus 40% attack speed, allowing them to get through, even though they are down. In the Carapace upgrades, they do have the plus two melee to match the plus two armor of the Terran. Skirmishing on the front needs a Baneling set in the middle of those Widow Mines. If those Widow Mines get a chance to spread, it's going to be a real problem for Raynor. His Ling Bane comes forward, does blow up most of the units. Ultra's on top as well. Ultra actually does very well, clears all the Widow Mines. Great play for Raynor. Raynor gets in the third base. More Zerglings. I love these Lings trickling into this third base. Clem attacks his own factory for a moment there with a little bit of a misclick. And a few more SCVs do go down. Rainer has rebuilt his hatcheries. Losing those two hatcheries earlier gave up control of this match, but he's got his fifth and his sixth base both coming back up. The gold base is mining. But of course, units lost have 4,000 resources. We can check in there and realize Clem's doing well enough to potentially win this game, especially if his fifth command center finishes, floats out without being contested. Right now, it's hard for Rainer to get enough units to truly contest an expansion. Run buying the third base repeatedly is probably just his best option, as that is the least defended base. And Rainer is also trying to open these minerals. That's hilarious. So they're both trying to open the back door of Clem there. Clem wants to expand in that direction. Rainer wants to do attacks up there with his Zerglings, and he will be running right on in. But as the bio pulls back, Clem makes Rainer respect it. Rainer kind of has to respect all of these run buys. Clem is just all over him right now. Clem not giving him a lot of room to breathe. Those Widow Mines getting a lot of damage. These Lings on the right side. Uh oh, a lot of them went down. Gold base is in jeopardy. This is a huge moment for Clem. If Clem can get rid of this base, it could be game over. Plus two Carapace is not quite there. 12 second delay on that, which means this is just plus one armor against plus two attack in favor of the Terran. But enough Ultra. The, the Ultras will chase back the army there in the top left. It looks like the Ultra Ling does deal with that. No Spore Crawlers here, though. We need just if we could run a Spore Crawler or two forward, it'd be a game changer. There are seven queens on the map. They don't seem to all be here. They must be spread elsewhere, injecting and the like. Zerglings will deal with these Marauders and potentially save the hatchery. But look at this. Clem is going to do a Clem thing where he keeps trying to target the hatchery down. That's disgusting. Clem, that's an illegal move. Mate, you need to go eat, 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 eat a balls. Get out of here. That's disgusting. Disgusting. Not fair. Not fair. He even repositions the Liberators, picks up the Marauders and puts them over there. Oh my gosh. Clem is, Clem is disgusting. That was so good. <laughs> Unless you're Raynor or a Zerg fan, in which case, yeah, yucky, yucky, yucky. <laughs> Clem's so good, man. Raynor's going to counterattack, though. Rainer is going to counterattack. He doesn't have any splash damage here. A fungal or a bunch of banelings would be good on these clumped up units, but this position is so annoying for Rainer to deal with. Rainer does get seven workers and a planetary on the left side. There isn't much to deal with it, but once the Liberator Siege is up, it can do pretty well. The Witherwines will get decent damage. One of those Ultras goes down, does drag damage inside the friendly worker lines, though. On the right side, the Queen's trying to transfuse that Ultra, but it goes down. It's 2-2 two -two against 3-3. Three -three. The Marine Marauder doing very well, and it feels like Rainer just doesn't quite have the numbers. Double Lib comes in the top left, gets rid of seven drones up there. These Medivacs are damaged, but they're still up alive the single ultra is it going to be enough to save the day it comes in there with the 2-2 the transfuse goes down it kills a few marauders but the marauder focus fire is good the ultra does fall on the other side third base does take a massive amount of damage but man Raina losing that gold base on that base in the top left so frequently it really is the base snipes that seem to be the the difference maker and i think it was the same when they played in some of their wtl matches on like site delta and the like right the, the, it was it was whenever Clem managed to snipe a few bases, that's where he'd suddenly run away with games. And it's these dirty moves where he'll pick up and drop in lib zones. And if you don't quite have the anti uh, as the Zerg, you do find yourself just outmanned and outgunned. And that is Rainer's position right now. Good run buys, keeping it scrappy. But of course, we can see in the army supply, not to mention the income, that there's no real comeback mechanism for Rainer. He doesn't have enough hatcheries. He's got this hatchery back up on the left side. The Liberator there just being a big old nuisance. Queens are trying to be rebuilt. He's only got two Queens out right now. Widow Mines and Libs easily defend the third mineral line. And Clem is just all-seeing, all-knowing. He is a beast. Clem's supply does not go down. <laughs> oh, Widow Mines. Apparently, Artosis discovered that at EWC. Yeah. It's, it's, he, he was winning so many fights in a row at EWC and Rainer has these moments where he does, you know, get a good little win here or there, but 
Clem is the perfect blend of micro and macro these days. Rainer does come in with a big ling run by on the left side. Rainer's obviously not ready to give up, but I think he's a little too far behind at this point. Beautiful spreadies on those Zerglings, man. Very nice micro. Getting some damage on the other side. There is a Liberator, though, forcing that Spore Crawler to move as it unseages itself. Links are going to evacuate on the left side. Needs an Overseer with these run buys as well. Against Clem, you really start needing to always have Overseers with every run by so you can clear the Widow Mines up and... That's something that's just easier said than done. I mean, Rain has been up against the wall desperately trying to survive for the last 10 minutes. It's not exactly a situation where you're casually adding overseers to counterattack groups with ease. Liberated does go down in the top right side as well. And the Marine Marauder coming through the middle. Look at this. He's pushing up to the top left. He's going to try and clean up the counterattacks there. A few Lings try to come in, but with the Banes and the Wid uh, Liberators in the Widow Mines, I think those Banes will get shot down. Clearing the creep on the right side, Rain is map control. All that early creep spread advantage that he got is just gone. It's dried up. No way to kill these Widow Mines before they fire. Oh, a big old smear there. 15 Zerglings go down. These Banelings, as I said, I don't think they get anything done. Well, actually, okay, they got nine SCVs. They did get into the close mineral line before the Widow Mine could take him out. Spork Roller does well. A lot of dead Zergling corpses, though. And you can see these Widow Mines, guys. 13 kills on one, 7 on the other. Clem attacking the right side. Fungal's finally coming in, but look at that. He focuses the Infestors. He says, well, I can't leave, but I can kill three Infestors before I go. And that is the sort of beautiful kind of crisis management micro that he is known for. Rainer's doing a very good job of spreading here against these Widow Mine shots, but look, there's still a Widow Mine in there. And, oh, it does actually get focused. That one, he tries to drag it into the Terran. Great drag there. Rainer dragged that into the Marine Marauder, but he just picks up and leaves. And this is where having either Mutalisks or Corruptors out, and he's going Corruptors now, to shut down these drops is so game-changing. But Rainer never got to that point. You guys know I'm very critical of players for never building Corruptors and, and how you need to build them to deal with these drops so they can't be this annoying. So a lot of players who watch a game like this and say, yeah, well, Rainer's an idiot. He should have built Mutas or Corruptors. No, he absolutely should have just defended that top left hatchery and this hatchery here. When those two got sniped, that was where he lost this game. It, you're meant to get a good solid ground army before you build the air control and unfortunately he, he was building that army he was getting to the position where he could start transitioning into air control and right when he was getting there he lost all of his extra economy started losing more creep spread and clem started to snowball out of control Rainer, i don't know like it's amazing that he's still alive right now it's just that he's doing this on 59 workers so he needs like the best fight we've ever seen and widow mine's still making it so difficult to push in Looks like Fungal only caught maybe a few Marines and Marauders there. Another Fungal comes forward. Pretty nice one, actually. I do like that Fungal. Corruptor's coming forward to try and deal with the Libs. No more Fungals left. One Infestor goes down to the Liberator. Good Bio Micro to try and get out of here. It looks like a few uh, Zerglings went in on this base as well. Six SCVs do go down, but there's plenty of Bio to defend that. And of course, the Bio coming in the top left could get in that worker line. Clem not paying attention for a moment, but oh, yeah, another hatchery snipe on one of the most important bases. It is the freshest base. He's going to try and pick up and get out of there. Corruptors will take out one. They could take out the second, but Rainer, he sees Clem taking a seventh base in the bottom right, and he realizes he just cannot keep up. All right, all right, all right. We've got Amphion and Rainer in the bottom left side of the map. Clem in the top left. This is a map where Dark never loses. Can Rainer channel some of that chaotic Dark energy? We're going to find out. I, uh, I definitely think it's not a bad map for Zerg at all. It's interesting they started on Alcyon because I think that's a very a relatively balanced map, but it, it does kind of favor Clem with like the Watchtower. It's good for an 8 racks. I guess you don't really need to worry about that with Clem, but it's, it's more that the Watchtower gives a certain level of map control in the center where you don't need to be worried as the Terran uh, or as worried because a small number of units can like delay all of Rainer's creep in the middle and then you, you've got these extreme flanks where you can harass him. And um, that's a gas pool. Uh, but why? But why, Rainer? But why? <laughs> I never know what the gas pool's all about on this map. Um, I'm obviously I'm curious to find out. Uh, do we build another drone here? We do. Okay, so it's, he's not going to try to do any Zergans. I actually yesterday for the first time ever tried Dark's build on this map. Um, Dark's build is you know you guys know that it's a 16 pool, 17 hatchery, six Zergling pressure into gasless third hatchery roach, right? Like it's it's such a a greedy build. But it's so good if they don't SCV scout. Of course, Clem is going to SCV scout, which means the Reaper, as it's about to leave the base, if he saw that your hatchery's late, which he will, he can leave the Reaper at home. Question is, does he actually scout for the gas timing as well? Does he hang around with the SCV and try to spot any Zerglings moving out? We were just showing a, a clip before 
here on the live stream of uh, the Rainer reacting to me in YouTube comments. Um, uh, what did you think of the Rainer stance about taking the game serious, but not always trying being different? Uh, so I don't, I don't know what that means. Sorry, man. I made that video a long time ago asking those players questions. I, I did. Uh, yeah, sorry, man. I, I'm going to need a bit more of a description of that. Salty Licious, thank you for the six months. Appreciate it. All right, Reaper's going to rotate around. Reaper's going to rotate behind. Oh, I think Rainer definitely has had issues with his uh, motivation over the last year or two. But the last six months, he's been back on the grind. Six to eight months, he's he's really improved in this time. And I think Rain has just realized that, like, basically, he's kind of he, he he was um he realized he was a bit delusional for a little bit. He thought that like he could just not practice and then practice for like one month, fourteen hours a day before a tournament and win a championship. And well, he got away with it sometimes. That's that's why he had that thought process, right? <laughs> but then he realized, hey, okay, I'm having some like real bomb outs in some tournaments. The maps are getting a bit harder, ZVT is getting a bit harder, the Protoss and Terran players are also getting better, other players are improving. He realized he was getting left behind, and that's why he did say, okay, I need to do, you know, four hours of really solid practice every single day. I don't need to stress over just grinding it, but like, I need to actually enjoy playing the game, and I just need to make sure I play every day and think about the game quite a lot in between that time. And, and ever since he's done that, I think Rain has been a little bit more... Uh, active. Okay, so this is gas pool into into two base muta, guys. Okay, I like it. I like it. This is an old school build order. Two base mutalisk is something which is so good, unless you're playing Clem and he's in your face with like a two one one stim marines and stuff. Uh, in my experience, guys like Clem can just kill you as the mutalists are coming out, right? Because he's just so good, even with a three CC build, like. You'll be trying to drone your third and get into like 1-1 one, one in Baneling speed. And he'll just be like, I have 30 Marines and six Widow Mines on the front. And he's got just a few Marines defending your Mutalisks perfectly. And it can be really tough. But it's a Dropper Lord. Did, did he just show him a Dropper Lord? Rainer's trolling him with a Dropper Lord. He's trying to make him think it's like a Queen Zergling all in or something. Oh, Rainer, that's that's hilarious. Because it costs only 25-25. And he even cancels it. Gets, it gets mostly of a refund. Did, I don't know if Clem saw it, though. I don't know if Clem actually saw that. But you could tell Clem is kind of poking around here, trying to figure out what's happening. Spire is, of course, on the way. Down here behind the natural, four gases are mining. I heard Clem is weak versus Mutas, says chat. Uh, I don't think Clem is weak versus Mutas. I think Rainer has always been one of the best Mutalist players in the world. And Clem is a weaker defender than attacker. And Mutalists naturally mean the Terran has to do a lot more defending than attacking. So I guess you could argue he's weaker to it. But I also think he's out of practice against it. No one's been playing Mutalists for such a long time. And as well as Rainer did, tying himself in maps with a lot of Mutalists play last time he played Clem. Every time he plays it, Clem's going to get better against it. So you got to realize... Is it a good style? Yes. Will it give Rainer more control? Yeah. Is it going to allow Rainer to, Rainer to flow a little bit more? For sure. But I, I don't think Clem is like weak, weak to it. It just is one of Rainer's best strategies. I mean, Rainer's pulled this out in big, important moments in his career against Maru when he won his world championship. He was getting ahead every game and then getting wiped in the late game. And he swapped to Mutalisks and won three games in a row. And he, he won from down 0-2 against Maru to just destroying him in the next three games. And that, I think it was the semi-finals, right? Beat Dark also with a semi, like I think he was down one to two against Dark, won two games in a row to finish that quarterfinals. Came down back from zero two down against Maru. Mutalisks were a really big part of like Rainer's style, right? Because he's a fast boy. And Mutalisks are going to reward a fast, multitasking heavy player. This is where things get scary, though. No Banelings at home. Mutas are going to do big damage on the other side. Clem does not seem to have realized what was going on, or he was simply relying on this pressure to keep him alive. The Lings are going to go for a surround, but the Hellbats are going to ruin him. The Hellbats are ruining him. Oh, no. Rainer getting absolutely massacred here. I mean, the Mutalists are doing good damage, but without a Baneling Nest. This is the sort of thing I was talking about. Ray Clem's the kind of guy who'll just kill you. Then again, the Mutalists are doing so much damage. Is it? Is it? Is it? I mean, if he can eventually defend... Maybe, but the thing is, how do you eventually defend? The Spore Grill is going to go down. Queens are going to go down. The drones are trying... I've got to try and get out of the base. Mutalists are killing everything in this natural. Oh my gosh, Clem's entire economy is gone, but so is all of Rainer's. Every drone goes down. Oh man. The Mutalists, look at that. Pulling back weak Mutas as well. He's going to get rid of the last Marines and Vikings. There are Mutas. Oh, but the mines, the mines. Okay, Clem defends his main base. Meanwhile, Rainer is trying to just build more Mutas. He's going to try and overwhelm this with Mutalists, I believe. Lings are here as well. He's going to take out the SCVs on the third. He could take out the main base as well. 
and go full base trade. That's actually an option right now. Spawning pool is still alive, remember, in the main. So, so as long as you can keep putting Zerglings, they can help a bit. But, oh, Muta's dying as they pop out. It's very expensive. Two Mutas have died this game. He's got 11 Mutas, 15 Zerglings. The main base is still alive. Losing this hatchery is rough. But it is 24 drones against 8 SCVs. You wait for that stim to run out. There's no energy left. Metavax are out of energy. But, oh, the positioning for Clem is beautiful. <laughs> Dude, that positioning's kind of crazy. I, I don't think you can lose your lair. I think you have to go. I think Rainer has to go. And I think he will be able to. The Lings, I don't know if the Lings should even fight. Yeah, I think you should just good Muta Micro. Really good Muta Micro. The Lings backing away is absolutely the right call. Defense his lair. Oh my lord. Rainer defends on 24 drones. Two base Zerg, 24 drones. Three command centers, eight SCVs. With mules triple dropping, it all comes down to what you can do against this army as Rainer. Because if Rainer can't crush this army or counterattack, and Clem can just, like, bring his force to bear. He's got Marines with, with Stim and, and Shields. Uh, they, they do very well versus, you know, unupgraded Zerglings and Mutas. You can see Link Speed's the only upgrade done for the Zerg. Lings run past. Mutas go on the left side. Looks like he sniped a Medivac there. Very nicely done. That Medivac's going to go down as well. This Command Center's in trouble. Main base has very little defense in it. It's one Widow Mine and five Marines. Mutalisk dancing around here. He, he's he's going to try and use the Mutas and Lings to bust the wall. Is he, though? No, he's pulling home. A bunch of Widow Mines and Marines. How many Marines are with this army? Right now, that's 12 Marines, five, six Widow Mines, and two Vikings. 12 Marines, two Vikings. Interesting. A couple of Overlords going down. That's expensive. Big catch there. Very big catch. I think Clem might have this. I know that's weird to say. I just, it, it all comes down. If you can drag the Widow Mines into the Marines, this fight could go amazingly for Raynor. It's, it's all about how these Widow Mines fire, really. And Clem is kind of just chilling right now. Lings are getting ready to come in. He's going to do it. Oh, my gosh. Pretty good. But there's still Widow Mines that haven't fired. One Mutalist goes down. Marines trying to escape there. Lings will clean up the rest of those Widow Mines along with the Queens. That Medivac goes down. He's going to try and hunt down the other one. Clem's trying to hide. He's trying to hide right now. Sees it. And that should be an easy cleanup. Just focus fire those Marines. And they will go down. Rainer pulls back the weak one. And, of course, Clem's going to try and unload and focus fire the Reddit Point Mutalist because he's a psychopath. But no, more Marines arrive. Medivac survives. More Marines are here. Mutalisk's going to counterattack. 31 drones are out. Zerglings and Mutas are still building. No sign of a Banely Nest in sight. Clem fell back to two bases. 18 workers versus 30. Notice Zerg has not had room to build workers. Only now does Rainer have a third hatchery on the way. The Mutalisk counterattack could be effective, though. There's a turret and a widow mine there. This top right side of the mineral line is exposed. Fresh mules, always something you'd love to pick off. He can rotate into the main base as well. The new turret there is not quite finished. Mutalisks grabbing a couple of SCVs. And the Marines all pulled back. I think if Clem kept attacking, maybe he could have actually done more offensively. But right now he's only got one Medivac, and that's a huge problem. Only one Medivac. Every time he stims these Marines, he ain't getting those uh, hit points back. Mutalist comes in, grabs himself an SCV, damaging a depot, looking for some Marines. Those Marines are actually very vulnerable there. This is just lone Marines for now. And Rainer realizing, oh, okay. Of course, he's worried about mines coming in, but six SCV kills going down. And you can see Clem would like a chance to reset. He's going to try and unload an eight, Zerg, eight Marine drop on the other side. But eight Marines on their own could get surrounded by just what's at home. These units on their own can deal with this. So Clem desperately tries to pull the attention away from him. That's Clem in a nutshell, attacking rather than just accepting a defensive stance. Mutalisks get focused, but good transfuse for Rainer. The drop is going to go into the main base. The Medivac's already heavily damaged, though. And those Mutalisks going to get a bit more damage there. But as the Lings jump on top, nice Muta pullbacks. Dude, the way Clem's trying to focus the Mutas and Rainer keeps pulling them back to deny? Beautiful micro on both sides. The rest of the Mutalisks coming together as well. Carapace finally starting here for Rainer. 40 drones against 30 SCVs. The work account does not look amazing for the Zerg. And Clem is once again coming with an attack. But upgrade-wise, Clem does not have a plus one attack. He never got that upgrade advantage you'd expect against a Mutalist player because he committed so hard to the Hellbat Marine timing. Mutalist is going to push in here. He's going to take out the Reactor. Depot, a couple of Marines here. Very nice damage. Clem's going to go for it. Clem's decided, okay, whatever. I'm just going to shove, man. And you know what? He's probably going to find some very good damage. 35 Marines. I don't know how you deal with this without a Bailing Nest. 25 Zerglings and 11 Muters. Can they beat that? I don't think so. I think you need a lot more Zerglings. There are 26 Zerglings about to pop. Spire's going to go down. Intercepts the Reinforce. Five Marines going down on the outside is huge. Yeah, the Spire falls, but I think that's still very good for Rainer. Loses a Gas, loses a Spire. If he can bait a Stim out before the fight starts, that'd be great as well. Oh, he's going to go for it. Wow, Rainer commits. Trying to focus the Muters down is Clem whenever he can. The Mutalist going in and out. The Ling's doing a great job of tanking, and it looks like that is going to be a hold. Does that seal the deal? I don't think so, though. Oh, Clem is going to throw in the towel. He went a bit too deep there. 
And even though Rainer was only three base and only up about eight workers, Clem needed to somehow find a way to pressure clear creep and then pull back and he just he never got back into that sort of macro stance his upgrades were so light it makes sense very well played for rainy to bring this one back this is such an interesting strategy because clem off a 3cc i don't think he saw the fake drop or anything and he's just like no i'm just gonna do a 2-1-1 hell that timing and and this hits like what six minutes it's a very scary timing because you know a guy who's taken on two base like don't get me wrong if rainer was playing roaches this would be a terrible strategy but you're hitting pre-six minutes. You've got like 14 Marines, five Heldats, two Medivacs, Stim. And that's just... Zerglings do nothing against this. They do nothing. Absolutely nothing. <laughs> the Lings got completely toasted. Scary moment in this game. Good scrambling for Reyna though. He managed to get on top of it eventually. And uh, killing the Marines and stuff as they pop out actually worked out really well. Hats off to Reyna for turning that into a victory. All right, guys, going into game three on Crimson Court. Rainer in the top right side of the map. Clem in the bottom left. Now, Rainer is doing an extractor, but he's only at 13 supply. Rainer, what are we doing, buddy? Oh, my lord. Oh, this is... A what is this? 15-15 onto the purple gas? Or what are we doing? You're still sending this drone out like 10 seconds too early. Uh, Guys, Rainer's build order is looking a little drunk right now. I'm not gonna lie. Is this Proxy Hatch Ravager on his go on his purple? Oh, okay. Oh wow. Okay, okay. This is crazy. <laughs> oh, this is really cool. Could Rainer have sent his Zerglings across the map instead of letting them get toasted to make the game easier? A hundred percent. A hundred percent, guys. If Rainer didn't fight with his Zerglings versus the first Hellbat attack and sent them across the map, it, he could have base traded much harder. Yeah, yeah. You guys are right. So second barracks comes down and he's like, well, that's fine because I, I mean, you have to take a gas at home though. You can't take the purple gas on the other side. It's not going to work. I, maybe, so, so this might be Rainer just gambling on the fact that it's Clem. So he won't go to Rex Reaper. He'll go third command center with like single barracks Reaper. Because two racks Reaper, it feels like there's no way. Oh, he's moving it across to take the purple gas. I just, I think, I think this is a free win for Clem build order wise, guys. This is, this is clearly a very clever build from Rainer. He was anticipating a certain build order. I can't imagine this works against two Rex Reaper because he can just deny you from ever mining that gas, which puts you in an essentially you're building queens from two positions, one at a time and slow Zerglings. A single queen right next to the two barracks, the Reapers will kill the queen and this will be game over. This is unfortunate because we didn't get to see Rainer get what he was looking for here. Like he goes for the roach and he goes for the gas, but that gas is going to get immediately denied mining and it's just going to be game over. So um, it's a big gamble. Rainer went to the casino today, guys. And um, yeah, I don't know. He, he went all in on black on the roulette table and uh, came up, came up red. So it's not too much more to it than that. And you got to get rid of that purple gas mining. Let's see how it goes. I, I could be, I could be calling this too early. Slow Zergen is obviously not ideal here. Clem, good micro, getting a bunch of Zergen kills. They are buying time, though. Every bit of purple gas he mines is good, because then Rainer can actually start roaches here. Okay, Rainer can start roaches here. I didn't even think he'd get to that point. Oh, wow. I thought Clem would be able to deny the mining before the roaches were out, like, completely, and kill all the drones. And he still might be able to. Queen goes down, but the roaches are almost here. Oh, and he doesn't want to throw the Reapers and Marines away because there is only units. So he's going to go two barracks here. But he's got a factory before commands on it. Really smart. If Clem expanded, he'd be in trouble. Because he did, didn't expand, I actually think he's in, in a really good spot. Second gas goes down behind this for Rainer. Rainer does not have a queen at all on this map. But does he really need it when he's making expensive roaches? Not necessarily. And you can see the Ravagers are coming in. He could start trying to kill the bunkers, use the roaches' hit points to kind of tank. But as there's now four Marines out, the firepower is very impressive for Clem. Clem's going to start repairing. He's got a command center on the way. And look at that. Reapers go around to intercept. But the Roaches are easily able to deal with that. There's a Roach building at home that we'll be able to defend. It's going to be a few seconds, though. So that Reapers could get in and maybe kill a drone or two. How many drones did he kill, guys? He's killed five units. Four Zerglings and one Queen. The Reapers, they actually pulled home. I think that's an F2, guys. I can't imagine that's on purpose. Unless he wants to try and hit the Purple Gas. 
Oh, he's trying to say, look, if you go for my bunker, I'm gonna go for your purple gas. But Clem, he's not actually attacking the workers on the gas. The bunker does die very quickly. Wow, I did not expect that. Reapers didn't actually kill any drones there, which is really good for Rainer. And if he could stand on that high ground and kill these Reapers, that'd be awesome. He's already focusing these Reapers down. The Ravage is doing really nicely. Oh, the bunker's gonna fall, man. Bunker does go down. Dude, is Rainer actually gonna be able to break him? Cyclone's out, though. Cyclone is there. Ravages need to pull back. Queen, she doesn't quite have transfuse energy. The Marines are starting to fall. There's Marauder out right now. It's an incredibly close fight. Queen pulls back. She oh, she doesn't quite get her transfuse off. Extra Ravager is morphing, though. The Marines are all gone, guys. Biles are gonna be going down. The Marine taking damage. The Depot goes down. Uh, oh, sorry, the Marine goes down. The Depot's about to fall, as is the Tech Lab, which means no more Marauder production. No ac uh, 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 no anything else. It's just gonna be a Cyclone, a couple Marauders and Marines. And once these bunkers and depots are gone, you're not going to be able to produce anything except Cyclones one at a time, which obviously Ravagers can deal with. That's a lot of damage on that Ravager, though. That really works out. New Queen building on the front, ready to transfuse. It's a 20 drone all in here for Rainer. Rainer's build order, I cannot believe he actually managed to secure the gas mining outside Clem's base versus low ground. Two racks. I cannot believe this worked. Rainer is actually a genius, realizing that he could somehow get gas mining up outside his opponent's base get enough to get the roaches going and shut the build down that is so so cool i thought it was a build order loss raider says you're dumb big it's about the, it's about timing it's about a matter of seconds now to be fair this reaper should have gone forward and and already been hitting those drones i will i will say that but how much time did he really lose like he was a little cautious with his first reapers as you can see good sport trick though extra zergings come out like and this was very narrow, right? The the, the margin for error and everything. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I think here he should have ignored the queen and focused the drones, which is unintuitive because you're focusing on, well, surely you kill the queen, then you get the damage. But no, no, no. I think the queen is so low DPS. The fact that Clem lost a Reaper there, I think it's more important to kill these drones because if you kill the drones, he has to like bring drones from the other side of the map. He can build some spores technically and stuff. So maybe it's okay for him, but I, my instinct is if you get rid of those drones early, because this gas mining is like everything for Rainer's economy. If you could kill like just one or two or three of those drones, it would be uh, be game over. Would Banshees be too late? Absolutely. There's no way to get Banshees with this. Zero chance. Yeah. Really sick build for Rainer, man. GG's. All right. Clever build for Rainer in the bottom right. Clem in the top left. A few really good points from Twitch chat. Was there any point that Rainer wasn't committed the true all-in? Could he have transitioned and expanded and defended off of his roaches at any point? If Clem pulled back to his main base ramp, absolutely. I think if Clem maintained the natural wall off, there was no chance. Even better point from the one. MO26 underscore the one says, what if he pulls a lot of SCVs? Then he wins the game. If you realize your opponent's building a hatchery on the purple gas outside your base, look, all you need to realize in that scenario is Rainer is completely all-in. You pull five to 10 SCVs with your early Reapers, then you don't need to run away from the Zergings. You can just A move the Lings, kill the Queen. Like the one in chat, let us know your league or MMR, or if you've ever even played StarCraft Ladder, because you literally just described how to win the game for Clem in hindsight. You just pull SCVs. It's that close to your base. It's like, it's like just pulling SCVs from here to here, essentially. 4.5K Terran. Okay, you are. I, I, was, I was hoping you were like a 2K player. Because every now and then there's like, you know, like a Silver League player who drops like a genius comment. And I'm like, oh, that's, I'm so proud of you. You're a Masters player. And that's absolutely the correct response. Um, I guess unsurprising that you're a high level player. <laughs> but yeah, no, you pull SCVs there, you shut it down. Because, um, and people be like, oh, but then can't Clem like Rainer expand at home and stuff? It's like, yeah, he can. But like, you know, he's already committed so much. The guy's pulling drones across the map, building a gas air at his base, like... You know, he's building a hatchery outside your base. You can you can pull eight SEVs, shut shut it down completely. And once you get rid of the purple gas mining and stuff, you can even then just back off, pull back and say, cool, like you can rebuild your gas from scratch, start mining it, and then eventually make some roaches. By that point, you know, I've got all the answers I need. Did I say 4.5K? I meant 450 MMR. Yeah, absolutely, totally. <laughs> I, I totally believe you. Now, Rainer is going to get to the pillar here. This is a marine first opening with a low ground wall off. So it's going to be a quick reactor factory off two marines. This pushes Rainer scouting back a little bit. Rainer going for a hatch gas pool is totally standard here. What's not standard is that. He's decided to skip Ling's for you to go for a roach run. I think this is reactive to seeing the marine. I think Rainer's like, wait a second. If you're building a marine, you probably can't stop me going with like six roaches. 
Notice it's just 22 drone. He's got 10 free supply. So arguably he shouldn't have built this overlord yet. He definitely shouldn't have built that one. That was unnecessary, that extra overlord. That's a mistake. Because he's already got too much supply free. Because you need to build these roaches immediately. Then again, if he can spend all five roaches straight away, does he have enough money? Four, he needs more money, he needs more minerals. This is what I'm talking about. You want to start five to six roaches ASAP, then build the overlord potentially. Um, because you see he's got one extra overlord. If he was out, if he was 38 out of 44 and he starts the overlord now, that's that's it's a different thing. Either way, seven roaches on the way is gonna be fearsome. These Hellions, if they don't see it coming, it's game over. So if these roaches can like sneak out this path, because the Hellions will go through the middle, that'll be great. Don't go through the middle, go south, go south. Yeah, Rain is going south. Can he get out though? He's got another roach about to pop in the main. That one's gonna give it away. I think that one's gonna give it away. Clem, he doesn't see this. Don't, yeah, pull the last roach back. Rainer realizes the last roach is a bit of a giveaway. Oh, the roaches, the roaches. Okay, the roaches don't get spotted. Dude, this is so good for, for, for Rainer. It's a Hellbat timing for Clem. Oh my god, Rainer. Rainer might just be getting a 3-1 victory. Now, Hellbats can hold on the ramp pretty effectively. <clears throat> oh, these roaches pulled back? Or were they forward roaches? Wait, wait, wait. What? Or maybe they were the last two that was trying to sneak out and they got spotted. Fair enough. Five roaches are on the other side of the map already, though. Marines are here. It's actually a good Marine count. There are five Marines. Five Marines and a Medivac could do pretty well, especially with Clem's Micro. You get a one-shot. Yeah, he can one-shot, but he doesn't focus fire. Rainer didn't focus fire. Oh no, the Hellions are blocking him. Warcraft 3. Clem playing Warcraft 3 right now in Starcraft 2. Blood body blocks, gets two roach kills. That's massive. Picks up, saves all the units. He only loses one Marine. That's one Marine for two roaches already. Clem is holding with no units right now. Insane, insanity. He's trying to build two Cyclones. You gotta get rid of the reactor. You gotta harvest production. Rainer is droning behind this. This is not meant to be a kill move, but he's meant to kill a bunch of SCVs. He's gonna kill the reactor. He's gonna start doing some nice battles. The Hellbat combat drop. He just tried to drop Hellbats on top of the Roaches. Clem getting very fancy right now. He does, Oh, the Ravager Micro is getting really good though. The Ravagers are getting really good value now. You gotta be careful. That Overlord needs to come forward to provide high ground vision. He's got such a good range advantage though. Six range against five against the Marines, but now the Cyclone gets here. Range advantage is no longer such a big thing. Hellbats dropping forward once again. Beautiful combat drops with that Hellbat Cyclone move forward. The Bile's not able to land and that is just excellent control from Clem. That should have been a much worse situation and this is what I've been saying for the last year is that Clem is an illegal player. It's unfair and, and he's it's disgusting. He's eating all of the Zerg's cats and dogs. It's just it's unfair. I don't no one else can defend like that without seeing it coming. But Clem has this ability to survive things that he should not be survived. He should have taken at least five workers of damage. He should have been in a lot more chaos. He should have taken way more damage. But he's like, my name's Clem. I just click things really good. It's 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 the, the kind of annoyance if you guys have ever played an FPS against someone who's truly talented and you're not. And they just, you surprise them. You come from behind. And if you don't instantly headshot them, it doesn't matter because they just do a 360 and headshot you without even knowing you were there. No warning, no preparation. Clem is that level of player when it comes to RTS. It's unfair. He is inhumanly good at this game. Rain is very, very good as well. But I mean, a couple of roaches and ravages, not as micro sensitive. And I just don't think he was expecting to be losing two roaches to a bloody Hellion block and a handful of Marines on a ramp. Cyclone drop even goes to the high ground, gets some more queens. He's going way too ballsy now. Is he going to YOLO on the queens? Dude, he saves it. No, okay, that was way too ballsy for Clem. Clem gets ahead of himself, loses his Cyclone drop. The Banshees have also taken a lot of damage. Where's the Spore Crawlers? You've seen Banshees. Where's the Spore Crawlers? Rainer's in panic. Rainer is not building Spores right now, and that is a disaster, mate. Where are the Spores? I guess he's just so broke. He hasn't quite had the money. The Queens. Oh, no. If he loses these Queens, he needs Transfuse Energy. Those Queens need to get away. Losing the Queens might be even worse than losing the Drones right now. Oh, no. He's losing one just before it got a Transfuse. Another Queen goes down. The Roachling almost needed to counterattack here. I think he should have moved across with the Roachling and tried to counterattack. I mean, Rainer is, it looks like, planning a Ravager Ling all in right now uh, because he's still building Roaches and Zerglings in panic. But the Banshees have seen this, and, and now it's kind of obvious that you're doing something a little cheeky like that. And the Banshee is about to run out of energy. <clears throat> and he's looking for the production. He's like, are you rallying Roaches, Lings, or Drones right now? Clem realizes that scouting is the most important thing with this Banshee right now. He wants to see what's coming out of those eggs. He doesn't confirm anything there, but nonetheless, he should be playing very safe. Like, he doesn't have any room for a bunker, unfortunately. Clem's natural is an absolute mess right now due to the early aggression. Doesn't even have a wall off. There's a hole there, guys. 
And the Banshee poking in and out. Six Ravagers, mass Zerglings making. It is a giant follow-up all-in. There's a tank and 17 Marines. He's going to put the tank over here, probably. If he puts it out front, it's very dangerous. Stim is done. One one and shields are on the way, but they're not ready just yet. One big Lynx around on the Marines. And then tank-friendly fire could be game-ending. But notice, Rainer is not going to have vision of this left side tank until a little bit later. Spoken in with some Zerglings. I feel like Clem might have an inkling that something's up. It's hard for him to confirm just yet, though. Zergling does see the third base nicely saturated. Rainer's going to feel some real urgency right now. Ravager Ling getting ready to go in. If he can buy all the tank almost instantly, get a huge Lynx around, maybe. But if he waits for 1-1 one, one and shields, he's dead. Banshee comes back in. Queen doing some damage. Oh, he's losing like three, four drones, though. Great micro for Clem. Here we go. Ravager Ling's about to go for it, Clem. Oh, here we go. Here we go. There we go. He's coming in for it. The Ravager Link goes for the giant surround. Big Biles in the middle of those Marines. Massive Biles. I don't know how he saved six Marines. I do not know how Clem managed to save six Marines even. His ability to pick up at the last second with no warning is unfair. Disgustingly good moves there for Clem. You've got to keep doing the Biles. Does Rainer though. Those Marines in a ball are so frightening. Only getting a single Marine with each Bile. But he is at least forcing Clem to move in and out. Which means, of course, over time... His units are getting overstimmed, but Banshee comes in from behind. It's slowly adding in the damage. It's a hard timer on this. Eventually, the Banshee will defend the Marines. Big damage going down, and then it's so much Ravager Ling. These buildings are actually making it hard, though, for Rainer to push in and kill anything. That being said, the Marines... Oh, they are very weak to Bile in those choke points. Dude, Biles of the choke points are big. He's going to have to Bile the Banshee at some point, though, just to force Clem to dodge. Maybe go for the Hail Mary on it. I think he expects Clem to be too good. He's like, look, Clem's not going to get hit by it. He actually even missed with that Bile there, as, of course, the Banshee was cloaked. The Ravages are starting to go down. The Lings are still coming in right now. 63 versus 44 workers. This needed to be a win condition. The buildings here, being an awkward cramped Sim City, actually does defend very well. And Rainer goes for the famous Ugu minus the final U. Just goes for the UGG rather than the Ugu. But uh, nonetheless, Ugu Yu, hats off to Mr. Clem. I got to watch that initial hold again. And I do think Rainer probably made some mistakes. Usually this is how StarCraft works. No one plays perfect StarCraft. But he goes in thinking he's going to catch him off guard. And he goes, oh crap, takes a bit of damage. And he doesn't focus fire there. So the second time going up the ramp, I think is a pretty big mistake. Wait, did he lose three roaches? No, he lets that one escape. And that does morph to a Ravager. But still, two roaches this early is, is massive. Because look at how close this whole fight ends up being. Imagine if there's two more roaches here. Like, yeah. It's it's game-changing. If he has two more roaches, he gets so much more damage here. Wow. Wow, 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 wow. Yeah. Yeah, getting those two roach kills is big. Rainer, if he just pulled back after the first poke... Rather than running up the ramp one more time, that would have been good. But hats off to Clem for the Hellion blocking to secure the second Roach kill. Really good play by Clem. GG, well played. Oh, right, all right, all right. Rainer's going to go for a 15-15 here in game five, the decider. Oh, wait, is he doing the same build? Wait, 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 wait. Is he doing the, the Proxy Hatch Ravager again? It's a 15-15. But forward, oh, hello. Okay, okay, okay. Oh me, oh my. And Clem is going to be going not for a low ground two racks this time. He's just going to be going for the high ground barracks. I wonder if Rainer is hoping that he's going low ground two racks Reaper. I wonder if he's hoping for that. And he's, he's actually maybe going to be annoyed that it's a high ground barracks. I don't know. Clem's been mixing it up a fair amount, to be fair. I don't think he's like super predictable in this regard. Spawning pool goes down a minute three. But we need a gas at home with this, right? There's no reason to do this with gases on the front. Yeah, we need that gas. I mean, the gas is kind of late, though, right? I guess maybe... Is he going to double gas, right? I feel like this is a double gas build. I, 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 In the old days, we used to not know about the 15-15. When we used to do this build, we used to do four... It was everything on 14. 14 proxy hatch, 14 spawning pool, 14 gas, 14 second gas. So you'd build the hatch, build a drone. Build the spawning pool, build a drone. Build the gas, build a drone. Because each time you chew up a drone into a building... You replace the drone, build the next building. This is how Bly used to do with the proxy hatch Ravager, one base Ravager all in essentially off of a proxy hatch. Um, this is only single gas though. So this is going to be... Second gas does go down now. Where's the Roach Warren though? He goes double queen before Roach Warren. Interesting. What a fascinating build. SCV comes in. Clem knows he's getting cheesed. Clem knows he's getting cheesed. Roach Warren has gone down at home. Clem, bunker on the high ground right now, my friend. 
Uh, he Notice he's cut SCV production. He realizes, look, SCVs are not a priority right now. Uh, he's even paused building the commands and he's going to go bunker on the natural. Now you should build bu backup bunkers always against a one base ravager, right? It's always about the backup bunkers. He sees nothing building here, so he should know three roaches are going to start soon. But why would you build a queen at home before building the roach warren, guys? I... It's, it's because... It... And then he cancelled the gas and now he's rebuilding it. I'm very... Is he going to go Ling speed? Behind this, it's going to be a Ravager Ling all in. It kind of has to be. Okay, so the Queen wants to spread creep, but he can't on its own. He needs these Roaches. These Roaches are not starting very early at all. Normally, you hit with three Ravagers at about 3.05 with the uh, the old Bly version, I think. 3.05, I think, was the timing. This one's going to hit a fair bit later than that. Every second matters with these early builds. SCV is still spotting for the natural expand. Clem has a bunker up. He's got a Cyclone. He's got more Marines building. This is such a fascinating build order. Okay, so, so queen, an extra queen's building on the front, by the way. I still don't know why there's a queen at home, though. What's she for? He builds a spore and then cancels it. Why has he got a spore? I'm, what? What's going on? This is such an odd build. A very odd build. Two queens on the front. So he's going to spread creep and he will be able to contain you. If he can force you back to the high ground and spread creep everywhere and then macro behind it, maybe. But because we were on double gas, only 13 workers on minerals. It's, it's not got a good macro transition. On the other hand, drones are being built at home now. So he is now droning up. Okay, so that's why there's a queen at home. This was always planned to be like a, I'm going to deny your natural, and then I'm, I'm not going to push into your main because there's no way I can get in there. Tank's on the way right now. One Cyclone's out. The Marines as well. Nice dodge on the Biles. And Clem continues to dodge the Biles very well. Two SCVs have gone down. Biles doing damage, but not really killing anything. Transfusers will be available soon, which means you can transfuse these Ravages. If you get seven Biles, seven times six is 420 damage. A Bunker has 400 hit points. So seven Ravages, Biling at the same time, means there's no chance for the Bunker to even repair. You can obviously do it with just five or six if you have enough Roaches, Ravages, and Queens adding their regular attacks in there as well. Siege Tank, though, coming to the low ground. Now, it's very exposed, but if you run past all these other units to try and get it, you're going to really struggle, right? And this is where, look at that, the siege tank shot. Massive damage from the tank shot. Ravager goes down. Ooh, okay. Buying this. Drones are building, and he's going to actually mine from this base as well. Link speed's on the way. He does need a natural expansion, though, if you want to do this. This is the old uh, Serral build from, um, there was a map automaton, I believe it was called, with a gold base. Uh, if anyone can remember that map, maybe link up the games. Serral, and we can take a look at it at the end of this. Serral used to do this build, where he would like he would, he would do a proxy hatch, but then he would drone up the expansion, the gold base that he'd proxy on your gold base, and, and then he would do a delayed three hatchery Ravager link timing off about 30 drones. And that's kind of what Rain is doing here, just off two hatchery. Um, this is actually a very scary build in the follow-up normally, but because Clem's been able to mine off his expansion the entire time, it's nowhere near as scary. If you've only been on one base as a Terran, it's much harder, but he's building four Marines at a time. He's got two tanks. He's got backup bunkers on the high ground, bunker on the low ground. It feels like Clem is doing an amazing job of not really letting this do that much. And uh, Rainer, without really getting that much urgency of the initial waves, I do think letting Clem get the natural established was a mistake. I think the old 14-14-14 build would have done much better than this. I think the old Bly build actually would have had more success at forcing Clem back to one base than the 15-15 that Rainer did. I could be wrong on this, but I, I definitely feel like the, the 10 seconds earlier hitting with the first Ravages, you could have started spiraling this way harder, especially with an earlier second gas. Even though the transition is weaker off that, if your opponent's on one base versus two, I think that's the difference maker. Right now, Rainer has a 12 army supply advantage. The problem is, can he catch the Marines out? If Clem can get his Marines in a ball moving backwards up that ramp, I don't think there's much damage you can really do. And look at this. Clem re-establishing his tanks in super safe areas. Oh, and he's even going to siege the high ground from up there. That's such a cute move. Wow. And he's even going to pull it back just to make sure it's not in range of Biles. He's like, look, I'm just going to barely reach one or two of the mineral patches, but I'm going to make sure you can't corrosive bile me in return. Wow, this is huge. Clem's playing very safe. Rainer finally has that third hatchery on the way. He's massing Ravager Ling. The, the, the real trick with this build is they think the push is over. They retake their natural and then seven Ravagers and 80 Zerglings run in when they, they think, you know, they thinking, oh, I need to move out and clear this creep and stuff. And, and that's, you can see how turtled up he is right now. Clem starts a third command center. Stim's almost finished. Stim's a problem. Once Stim finishes, it's lights out. You cannot beat 30 Stim Marines in a ball with Ravager Ling in this scenario, I don't think, unless you get a full surround. If Clem moves out in the open, yeah, you can do it. That's how I would lose right now if I was in Clem's shoes. But Clem, you can tell, is respecting Rainer. He's playing so carefully and safe. 
And he, oh, he's going to sneak out with a drop. That's kind of crazy. That does leave him a little light on units at home. But since Rain is waiting for him to step out and make a mistake, that's Rain. Rain's whole move here is like, I want to wait for you to make a mistake. And Clem says, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to go double engineering bay behind this. I'm already on three barracks. Double drop's going to go across the map. It's going to checkmate you, right? It's going to force you to make the play. And then he can just pull all of his SCVs and actually survive. Sorry, guys, misclicked on the mini map there. But if you you can lose every SCV on this natural, you're still ahead as Clem. Clem's on 50 workers right now. He's moving a tank forward because he's thinking about trying to get a little further forward. That that tank is very exposed. I'd probably try to put that on the high ground if I was him. He's going to try and move these tanks forwards, very far forwards. He's unloading the main base in the fog of war. The Lings are waiting. Notice Rain is trying to pull back. He's trying to lure him into the open. But look at that. The Marines stim in. There is no answer. Clemothy Chalamet is absolutely looking like the Lisan Al Ghaib today. He's managed to survive a sandstorm of Zerg strategies. And he is he's, he's, he's right now dune walking his way to victory. He's just too far ahead. The, the jigs aren't. He knows you're all in. He's doing massive counter damage. He knows he's just got to survive. He's got to spread these tanks backwards, though. He may be getting a little cocky right now. Runs forward, does lose a bunch of Marines. These Marines back here doing massive damage. The Lings and the Ravagers are going to go for it. Rainer is all in. He's got no economy. He has to go right here right now. He's going to die forward, biling one of the northern tanks. The center tank goes down. The Lings surround the southern one. The Ravagers actually doing pretty well right now. Gets a bile on the Marines. There's another tank that got saved on the ramp. Nice. Medevac micro. Clem puts that in an emergency position. Do Dude, the attack is actually kind of breaking through, but as the Marines come in from behind, the SCVs in front, and remember, there are still five Marines being built at the time. There's Stim, Combat Shields, and soon to be some upgrades on the engineering base as well. Marines trying to pull back in these medevacs to the ramp. That tank on the high ground, there's no way to get that ramp vision as long as the Marines guard the ramp. Second tank coming down. You don't really want to siege it on the ramp because it blocks your unit, so he sieges it on top of the ramp. But right now, Clem realizes the longer he holds on, the better it is for him. 20 workers against 42, not to mention mules that could potentially be dropped as well. Command center is starting to burn a little bit, though. He's only repairing it with a few SCVs. He's going to come forward with the Marines, start to try and force a fight. He does eat a big bile. Clem's got to be careful with that micro. And there we go. Ravages taking big damage there. Damage output nowhere near that of the Stim Marines. And he picks up at the last second and pulls back the Lings, trying to breach the ramp now to punish Clem for getting a bit ahead of himself. Biles do land. One tank goes down. Second tank goes down. But Rainer pays with his entire army. And that there is Clem managing to stop a monster truck in its tracks. Rainer brought out amazing build orders here. I absolutely love the way he played this series. But unfortunately, I think losing those two extra roaches in that previous game was a big difference maker. And let's also just benchmark how early did he get these early roaches in? Because I just think this is way too late. I think building a queen at home before building the roach warrant makes no sense. I think delaying the second gas also is a mistake for him as well. If you look at this, Rain is floating a ton of money right now. And to me, it didn't feel like an optimized build order. I'm going to just benchmark this attack and we're going to quickly do some fact checking before we close out the cast for this series because I really want to I really want to investigate both the Serral Automaton build that I remember from like five years ago. I also want to investigate, I think it was 2019 was Automaton. Um, I also want to investigate, of course, uh, Bly 14, 14, 14, the, uh, the proxy everything build because this just feels like, like this is not hitting at an early timing at all, right? The first Roach arriving at 314, this is so late. Yeah, this, this is not a fast push at all. This is kind of... I, I think Rainer was expecting to deal with the barracks on the low ground and was like, oh, it's going to be easy to deny your production and push you back to the high ground. But because the production's safe on the high ground, this is not working out. All right, guys. So actually, we found the game. Grand Finals WSG 2018. Serral vs. Innovation. Now, this was held early 2019. So this was held in March 2019, even though, like, if, if I bring this up, yeah... This was posted on YouTube June, June, June 8th, 2019. So basically, let's go into game and take a look. Check this out. So this was Automaton. The quality, I don't know why they've got the map looking this dark and terrible. It is what it is. Um, the hatchery goes down on the other side of the map. <laughs> so he goes for a gold base, hatch gas pool. And if we zoom through, I have a feeling this one probably didn't hit very hard because this is a much older time in StarCraft. And Innovation scouts that he's getting one based and goes command center on the high ground. So this is a game where he doesn't even try to contest the natural. This is a time when Terran players were, I think, a little more fearful and even respectful of these all-ins. Also, Ravages morphed three seconds faster back in these days. That's the only real meaningful balance change I can really think of. But three Ravages and a Roach at 326. So this is similar to the sort of timing where Rainer was hitting. Remember Rainer hit with one Ravager, a Roach, and another Ravager morphing behind at about 317. 
So he would have had, yeah, about four, four units, three Ravages in total, about the same time. So this is very similar to what Rainer did, but it's against a guy who's built this bunker on the low ground. And you can see if there's a full bunker there with SCVs repairing, you ain't going to bust this with just three Ravages and a Roach. So I think Rainer against Clem and the modern Terrans is going to need to commit more to this to make it work. But what's so cool about this build is you take the third and the fourth base even. So he's going to four hatcheries. Obviously, the gold minerals helps you with that. And he's actually committed so little to the pressure because Innovation scouted it and kind of overreacted. So this is like the old days where you could get Terrans to overreact to pressure. The modern Clems, Beyond's Marus, they sometimes won't even scout and they will just try to micro their way out of pressure and they will not give up any ground unless they absolutely have to. Whereas Innovation and older Terran, they would be like, oh, you're one basing. I should, you know, stay safe and wait for tanks on the high ground and then move out. So Cyril's able to deny his natural and kind of siege him and pick off a depot or two with three Ravages and a Queen, spread creep outside his base, hold down the macro key, and then he's making like Ravager Ling behind it. Now, because Cyril Clem refused to come out, he ends up macroing all the way up to 50 drones and mass roaches here as well, right? Because he, he there's there's no fights. Innovation's not giving him a chance. Oh, wait, wait, no, here's, here's the big Ravager Ling bust, actually, sorry. So here's the Ravager Ling bust. So there's Banshees and Cyclones moving down. He builds a Spore Crawler on the front, and you think, okay, it's just a little bit of a Ravager Queen siege. But if you ever move down into the open, the Lings can run in as well. And he has a whole pack of Lings waiting off to the right of this. He's waiting for the tanks to come to the low ground, the Marines to come to the low ground. And that's when the Lings show themselves. Because you don't even think he has Ling speed as the Terran here. And that's the whole mind game with this build order. And it's basically game over from that point there. But the idea of following up with Surprise Ravager Link after a Proxy Hatch Roach, very, very cool idea. And I love that uh, LK Dragon found this game for us. Thank you very much, LK Dragon. Cool to see Rainer bringing this out, an older build style. Unfortunately, against the modern Clem, apparently you need to commit way harder to deny his natural. GG, well played to Clem.